The Witch of Endor is an enigmatic character for her role as a fortune teller with the first king of Israel, Saul. For both Judaism, Christianity, and pagan spiritual practices, the Witch of Endor is an important character who comes from the Old Testament. The dialogue that monarch Saul had with the late Samuel, the last judge of Israel, has generated great controversies throughout history. Church elders and some modern Christians have debated the theological questions raised by this story which seems at first glance to claim that it is possible for humans to summon the spirits of the dead by magic. In this video, you will discover the untold story of the Witch of Endor. Join us on this fascinating journey through the sacred scriptures, and let's discover together if it was Samuel or a demon who spoke to Saul. Before delving into this topic, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so that YouTube notifies you every time we publish a new video. We begin. The biblical account does not identify her name as such. She is only described as the fortune teller of Endor. The city of Endor is mentioned in the Bible as belonging to the tribe of Manasseh, located in the north of Israel. The fortune teller of Endor had been prepared at an early age to work as a fortune teller and thus generate income. Some scholars consider her the most influential witch of the Old Testament because of the demonic connection she had with her master Satan. Under this context, King Saul appears who at the end of his days made a tragic decision which led him to a very tragic end with his children. The monarch's government was characterized by a lack of obedience to God, which is why it took him to lose the throne. The biblical text tells us of God's distancing and separation from Saul. The Philistines launched a military campaign against Israel and besieged Shunem. Saul was terrified by the imminent attack of the Philistine army, and not knowing what to do, he consulted the Lord, and the Lord did not answer him. In the first book, Samuel chapter 28 verse 3 onwards. It tells us that Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes and left with two men and they came to that woman at night. And he said, I pray thee, divine for me by the spirit of divination and bring up to me whomever I tell thee. And the woman said to him, Behold, you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the evocators and the diviners from the land. Why then do you put a stumbling block in my life to cause me to die? Then Saul swore to him by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, no harm will come to you because of this. The woman then said, Who shall I bring to you? And he said, Bring me to Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? Well, you are Saul. And the king said to him, do not be afraid. What have you seen? And the woman said to Saul, I have seen gods rising from the earth. He said to him, What is its form? And she answered, An old man comes covered with a cloak. Saul then understood that he was Samuel, and bowing his face to the ground, he made great reverence. Dear listener, Let's observe the terror that that fortune teller felt when she saw supernatural creatures rising from the earth. If one reads the account carefully, one realizes that Saul did not actually see Samuel. It was the fortune teller, who may have never seen Samuel in life, who said she saw an old man covered in a cloak or cloak. Of course, they concluded that that figure was Samuel. Then that human figure responded as if he were Samuel because demons can impersonate or imitate a person. Saul had opened himself widely to the influence of Satan and had entered into his person. Let's continue reading the biblical story. And Samuel said to Saul, Why do you trouble me bringing me up? I am very distressed, Saul replied. The Philistines are attacking me, and God has abandoned me. He no longer answers me, neither in dreams nor through prophets. That's why I decided to call you, so you can tell me what I should do. Dear ones, in these verses we see again that Saul had been abandoned by God 
he was very desperate and scared by the advance of the Philistines. Let's continue with the biblical story, Samuel answered him. But if the Lord has distanced himself from you and has become your enemy, why do you consult me? The Lord has fulfilled what he had announced through me. He has taken the kingdom out of your hands and given it to your companion, David. You did not obey the Lord, for you did not carry out the fury of his punishment against the Amalekites. That is why he condemns you today. The Lord will deliver you and Israel into the hands of the Philistines. Tomorrow you and your sons will join me, and the Israelite camp will fall to the Philistines. And it was in this way that the monarch Saul held a conversation with the supposed Samuel the deceased judge through the fortune teller of Endor. Some biblical commentators affirm that God indeed allowed Samuel to speak to Saul, alleging his sovereign and permissive will, however, this explanation cannot be sustained, nor is it compatible with the rest of the scriptures. We openly reject that it was the real Samuel who spoke to Saul through the invocation of the fortune teller. This position is widely supported by texts from both the Old Testament and the New Testament that show the divine sentence for those who practice the invocation of the dead. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10, it says, Let there not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices divination, or a soothsayer, or a spell reader, or a sorcerer, or an enchanter, or a diviner, or a magician, nor who consults the dead. For everyone who does these things is an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations the Lord your God drives out these nations from before you. Dear listener, in these verses we see that God strictly prohibits consulting the dead. However, King Saul had been abandoned by God. As far as he was concerned, heaven remained silent. And therefore, Saul went to hell. Now, Saul did not see Samuel. It was the fortune teller who described him. Demons can impersonate a person and imitate him. The Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, and it is no wonder because Satan himself disguises himself as an angel of light. Dear ones, we believe that the fortune teller was a fraud. In reality, what appeared was a demon. She was controlled and ruled by a diviner demon. Therefore, a demonic spirit impersonated Samuel, imitating him, and it was not Samuel who appeared. God no longer spoke to Saul, and what was even worse, Saul no longer had a relationship with God. The dead cannot communicate with living beings in any way, and therefore this incident was satanic from beginning to end. Another point to analyze in this passage is the reverence that Saul made before the appearance of Samuel. This lets us see that it was not the real Samuel because if it had been, it would have prevented Saul from prostrating. Since prostrating is an act of worship, no righteous person, not even the angels, have allowed themselves to be revered in such a way, since only God is the only one worthy of being worshipped. Now let's notice something very important here, the prophetic words of the supposed Samuel. Tomorrow you and your sons will join me. This statement of the supposed Samuel allows us to clearly see that it was not the real Samuel in terms of the succession of events and the place that they would share in eternity. First, Saul did not die the next day, as the supposed Samuel had said. The Philistine ambush occurred after three days. In this case, the prophecy said by the supposed Samuel was false. Second, Saul could not be with Samuel after his death because Saul was separated from God and committed suicide himself. Let us read in the first book of Samuel, chapter 31, verse 4 onwards. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw out your sword and pierce me with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and pierce me and mock me. But his armor-bearer did not want to, because he was greatly afraid. Then Saul took his own sword and fell on it. And when his armor-bearer saw Saul dead, he also fell upon his sword and died with him. Dear listeners, in these verses we see that Saul committed suicide. We have to understand suicide goes against the word of God, which is why Saul committed suicide and went to eternal damnation. Let's notice something important here. The supposed Samuel said to Saul, Tomorrow you will join me. 
Here we see again a false prophecy of the supposed Samuel, since the real Samuel was in Abraham's bosom, while Saul committed suicide and went to eternal damnation, which is why they were not united as the supposed Samuel had stated. Now, in the first book of Chronicles, chapter 10, verse 13, it says, Thus Saul died for his rebellion with which he transgressed against Jehovah, against the word of Jehovah, which he did not keep, and because he consulted a fortune teller and did not consult Jehovah. For this cause he killed him and transferred the kingdom to David, son of Jesse. With these verses, we see that Saul had sinned against Jehovah for having consulted the fortune teller instead of consulting Jehovah. For this reason, Jehovah delivered him into the hands of his enemies, and he had a tragic end. Dear Ones, The tragic end of monarch Saul was a consequence of decisions based on the arrogance of his stubborn heart. He lost the legacy to the royal dynasty. God gave him many opportunities to amend his faults, but he persisted in disobedience. Therefore, we must not be confused. God would not submit to making truces with Satan. Notice that while Saul sought a word from God through the prophets, God was silent because of his unrepentant heart. So how would he then allow him to receive his word through a fortune teller? This is contradictory to the character of God and his word. Therefore, Saul did not speak with Samuel, but with some demon, and note the imprecision of his prophecy, Satan has always been characterized by lies mixed with certain truths to generate confusion. On the other hand, the God we serve is a God of absolute truth. Dear listener, remember that the practice of invoking the dead or consulting the future through any means is not profitable and will not give good results to our lives since it is not endorsed by God. Our true responsibility is to pay attention to our present and how we are daily cultivating our relationship with God. When we depend on God, the future will not be something that worries us. Rather, there is complete certainty that God will sustain our present and future. And so we are reaching the end of this video. Thank you for being from this humble wisdom channel. God bless you greatly. This is from me, and it will be with me. Until the next video.